Love Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, the forgiveness doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that is rooted within me. Hi and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the forgiveness doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. And today is a Memorial Day celebration. 267, and we welcome you to the show. Our calling number is 646-200-4169. Press 1, that puts you in queue to talk to Michael, and hello, Michael. Hey, sweetie. Welcome to the show, everybody. President's Day, I guess we're celebrating the head of the corporation, and so let's say raw for the corporation, and let's say down with the wars. It's time for war to end on planet Earth. So let's put an end to it. How are we going to do that? Well, our invitation to you is that today and every day, you look at some situation in your life where you have some form of hostility or fear, something that you're probably blaming somebody else for. And instead of blaming somebody else, we're going to invite you to pick up a worksheet and do some forgiveness work around that. What will happen if you do that is you'll eliminate hostility and fear from your body from your mind, from your emotions, from your life, and from your world. And when you do, gee, there won't be anybody to make war on. So that's our invitation to be part of the team that changed the world. And that's what we're requesting of everyone who chooses to get involved in this work on a daily basis. Do some forgiveness work. Forgiveness is, uh, as we're speaking about it, is the ancient Aramaic idea of forgiveness, not what people tell us uh, uh, from the Greek translations that we're going to let somebody else off the hook and that's going to change something inside of us, which, of course, is ludicrous, but rather what we're asking people to do is to go inside themselves and change their internal dynamics. Our website, www.whyagain.com, you'll find a link on the right-hand side that says Download Worksheets. We'll give you the whole story about forgiveness, including three radio shows where we have live guided somebody through the process and uh, and in so doing offered the uh, the, the how-to of actual forgiveness, how to change what's going on inside of you so that you can be done with your hostility and fear. So we're delighted that you're here. And, Jeannie, do we have any callers, anything happening uh, on, in the chat room? So there are a few people in the chat room. Uh, Nene's out there, music comes out there, a bunch of guests. And uh, then we have several people on the switchboard, but nobody has their hand up. David's with us, Tim is not. Hello, David. Welcome Good to the show, David. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well, Michael and Jeannie. I'm glad to hear you guys are doing well. And uh, I'm sitting here in Jeffersonville, Indiana, about to uh, – I'm visiting one of my sons, Bradley, this afternoon and going to be doing some breath work with him and – possibly with his wife, so looking ahead to that, and uh, it's a fabulous day here. Did I lose you guys? Oops, excuse me, I had my button pushed. What can I say? Anyway, it's a delight to hear your voice, David, and uh, we've been playing telephone tag for a while, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that things are going well with Bradley. We, uh, we hold your breast session this afternoon in a blessing, and uh, he and his family the same. Thank you. Yeah, 
looking forward to that. I'll give you a little update on it uh, later on. Great. Well, our calling number is 646-200-4169, 646-200-4169. If you have a question for us, we would love to have a conversation with you. Uh, we, many we, people don't call in. Go ahead, sweetie. We do have a question in the chat room whenever you're ready for it. Let's go for it. Okay, it says, ask Michael to talk about isolation. Why do we isolate or tend to eliminate people from our lives when things go wrong or our goals are violated? And that's from Nene. Read the first part of it again, if you would, please, Jean. Um Talk about isolation. Why do we isolate ourselves or tend to eliminate people from our lives when things go wrong or when goals are violated? Okay, well, that that one's actually pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, if I think that you're the problem in my life and all I have to do is get away from you and everything will be okay, then I'm going to try to get away from you. Of course, that doesn't make everything okay. It doesn't change anything that's happening inside of us. However, if the stimulus for what's going on inside of us is gone, it seems like, well, see, I have nothing to deal with. No, everything's okay. It must have been them. But, of course, uh, when you go find another one of them and the results are the same, you realize that isolating didn't cut it, didn't heal anything, didn't allow you to deal with anything. And, and the idea of this work is to move forward and face what's going on inside of you that perhaps you would rather not face and instead of uh, blaming it on someone else, taking responsibility. So the simple fact of isolating, when you when you recognize that, let's say, for instance, when somebody says certain words to you, it brings up some form of hostility or fear. Well, of course, if I'm not around those people for them to say the words, then my hostility or fear doesn't come up, so I can pretend I don't have any, and that it's all their fault that I do when I do. So the invitation is face your fear. But go for it. Hang out with the people to bring your stuff up. And, of course, if it gets into overload, you have the right to say, well, I think I'll take a little breather here. I think I'll do some work and uh, and make sure you keep doing your work. But that would be kind of uh, my take on it. Did you say that question was from the name, Jeannie? Yes, it was. Oh, okay. Now you might want to call in the name, and we could have a little more conversation about that if you'd like. In any event, uh, anything else happening in the chat room? Anything else to be aware of, sweetie? Any callers? Are no, six four two. Well, six four six two hundred four one six nine is our calling number. And if we were sitting in a room together, would you have a question for me? If I had just finished doing a workshop, would you come up to me and say, hey, "What about this, Michael?" Well, here's the chance. Pick up the phone, call us six four six two hundred four one six nine, and ask me, "What about this, Michael?" And we'll see if we can support you. And beyond the uh, the idea of, uh, of ending war on planet Earth, where we want to go is to end the internal conflict that uh, so many people have that they they are blaming on everybody else. And as the uh, internal conflict disappears, things change. You know, there's there's always a uh, an internal reason for what we think is externally causing our pain, and when we touch into that internal reason, then we have the option to change that internal dynamic, and that's what puts an end to uh, to the hostilities, the fears, the pain that's generated internally, but looks like it's being caused externally. Nene's with us. Oh, cool. Hi there, young lady. Hello, my heart family. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Florida. Yeah, we're having a nice day in uh, in Ocala. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Um, I, the question, although, you know, we've talked about this many times, is just that I, I noticed the other day when I was in my healing crisis, that desire to be isolated, that desire to just um, be away from from the world, I would say. And uh, so I was curious why, if there was another reason 
for that behavior, which is very typical um, of many people. You know, the people or avoid going back to the place. Uh, I heard a friend of mine who said, I don't drive there anymore because whatever, once they had an accident and they don't drive there anymore. Or uh, the normal, like, Nene, why are you back here? You know, when I'm back in my parties and my tango situations and all that, I'm back. And people say, no, I never went back again after I broke up with whoever or whoever goes there. I don't go to that place. So... Michael, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Oh, excuse me. I think another reason, uh, Nene, for isolation, especially in relationship or someone that we've, we've got a connection with, is that the lower our vitality level, the easier it is to hide from ourselves. And so if I'm off on my own and in a lower vitality level, I can pretend there's nothing going on inside by just holding my breath and staying in that state of denial. Once I uh, I connect with somebody, especially in a loving way, then I can no longer stay in that lower vitality state, and it's going to intensify whatever it is I've been hiding from myself. Mm-hmm. So then I can... I can I can more easily pretend there's nothing to deal with if I'm away from what vitalizes me. Sadly, a lot of times a place or a time when relationships break is the time when the most healing potential is in yeah. that relationship because people yeah. turn tail and run when the intensity comes that otherwise they're able to hide from themselves. Exactly. That makes sense for you? Yes, yes. Yes, definitely the vitality is so, so important, um, you know, to help us um, bring bring out everything unlike love. Yeah, it's very clear to me. So if I am so isolated, I don't have the vitality, therefore I don't go any further, deeper into my my healing, Right. Exactly, exactly. And so when I approach what vitalizes me, I may intensify my pain. But Mm -hmm. that intensified pain is a good thing because now I'm in touch with what it is that I need to work through, what it is that I need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So other than that, how how are you uh, doing coming out the other side of that uh, healing process that you shared with us last week? Well, very nicely. Um, Dayu did the breathing for me, and I did for her. Uh, It was awesome, really extraordinary, you know, because the points are so important, you know, those alignments. Uh, So it was pretty awesome. I spent the afternoon with her, and it was very nice. And then the, the following day, I got to see a friend from Venezuela, and something was triggered, you know, some of my... Um, internal sense of being abandoned or or and or being alone because they were leaving and I just wanted to live with them. <laughs> but I was able to very fast process that out. You know, I was very conscious about it. I processed it out. But and then I'm feeling very well and I'm feeling like some and another veil has been taken away off my system. Very cool. Well, and, and of course, each time we let go of another layer, another load, what happens is we get to uh, to move around the world in a lighter way, not having to carry that load. More vitality and all things move forward. So that's cool. That's uh, You know, you really uh, are uh, to be acknowledged for the work you're doing. Right, thank you. I think I'm in my... my um Worksheet number 2020 or 21, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Congratulations. That's fabulous. <laughs> and, and if you were to share with folks what uh, what that's been like for you and what that's done for you, what, what would you have to say? Well, I definitely uh, feel the internal nurturing 
and how I perceive things differently now. My relationships have changed um, and with my daughter too, and I noticed the more I change in here, more pretty things manifest on her side as well in relationships as well and in health. And for me, it's been um, well reviving really a new life because I can handle any challenge now from a higher point and uh, coming out of the victimhood and understanding how I am a co-creator and how important is that being connected to the true being from all, all points of view, health, spirituality, intelligence, love. So it's been really awesome. Fantastic. Nice work. Nice work. Yeah. So up to t- worksheet 2000. That's uh, that's pretty pretty fabulous. Yeah, 2021, oh. something like that. 2021. All right. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and also I noticed when I come out of the crisis, I start craving again to my natural food and the raw and the juices. Because when I'm in a crisis, I have this um, desire, you know, for for the hot fudge and the chocolate or, you know, all that. Or I lose my appetite. I notice when I'm in a crisis, I lose my appetite. And when I come out of the crisis, I see all the green bell pepper, all the tomato, and I start feeling that desire to go back into <laughs> more of the good stuff. <laughs> Very cool. That's fabulous. Yeah. So I posted uh, in the chat room this coming Thursday, the 23rd, February, another meeting, and it's going to be at Panera Bread on 17th Crossway, and the address is there. It's um, uh, The address is 1461. Southeast 17th Street Causeway, and the zip code is 33316. And give us the time on that again, Danae. Yes. Um, Panera Bread, and the address is 1461 Southeast 17th Street Causeway. And that's Fort Lauderdale, 33316, Thursday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. Awesome. So everybody that's in Fort Lauderdale, Mm -hmm. uh, support group is ongoing. Things are moving forward with Nene. And uh, whether you speak English or Spanish, Nene is teaching in both languages and Mm -hmm. supporting people in awesome ways at Learning Forgiveness. Um, two things. One is for Nene as well as you, Michael, and, and there was a comment in the chat room about uh, Nene that um, you need to not make yourself feel wrong for wanting to get away or spend quiet time. And so I replied that, you know, that's true and that, like Michael had said, you know, if it's too intense to step aside to continue doing your work, but just avoiding the people who bring it up for you. Um, doesn't make it go away. Make it go away. So you want to comment any more on that one? And then I have a, another question in the chat room, and we have someone else on the line too. Uh, is anyone talking? <laughs> yes, I do have a thought there, and that is that there's a big difference between wanting to get away and having quiet time. They're two totally different things. So if the dynamic is, you know, I'm just going to take care of myself for a little while. I'm going to go get in the bathtub. I'm going to soak. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to do some work. That's a whole different thing, man. i got to get out of Dodge. And so the question was isolating oneself. Isolating oneself is not about getting quiet time. To me, that would be a whole different dynamic. So if I am isolating myself, then I'm going to want to do some work out, uh, around that. You know, it would be more of a compulsive type of thing. Whereas 
it's a whole different thing to say, you know, I'm just going to take some time. I'm going to get in the bathtub. I'm going to soak, light a candle, breathe, take care of myself. That's a different thing than isolating. So, so that would be for me the distinction there. And and uh, if I'm looking to isolate, get away, separate, then I want to do some work around that so that that compulsion is no longer there to drive me. And if I'm going to take care of myself, I might even want to spend more time taking care of myself and uh, you know make that a more regular habit because everybody deserves that. Awesome. That's and the other. That's good. Yeah. Um, the question in the chat room, and then we'll take the caller, is: Can you address the role of confusion in healing? I know that confusion is a sign of healing, but can it also be a way of avoiding? Well, you know, we can use just about anything, but uh, if you're if you continue to do your work, you're going to go through that phase of confusion, but the confusion is going to dissipate and disappear. The reason why there's confusion is because we have conflicting realities in our minds. And when conflicting realities, if I hold a reality that's totally, completely false and truth shows up, there's a conflict between those two, and each one sets a different, different energy in motion inside of me. And so... When that conflicting energy takes place, it's confusion. If I continue to do my work, if I continue to clear my, find my thought, then my confusion is going to disappear. That's the, the the confusion that comes in a healing crisis. Now, remember, we said that the symptoms of healing are identical to the symptoms of disease. So, somebody who's not in a healing process, someone who's not doing the work, someone who's not in that space of vitalizing themselves, doing the right things and such, can play the game of confusion. Oh, I Of course, usually that person, one of the earmarks of the person who's playing the game of confusion is as soon as you confront them with truth, uh, they all of a sudden go into the I know it all position. Oh, I, I, no, you don't have to tell. I already know all that. It's, that's okay. I, I already knew that. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I got that handled. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the process that I would, I would offer of confusion. And so we want to be on the healing side. So, and the only difference between the disease and the healing aspect is, is the energy moving in is the energy moving out. In a disease process, the energy is moving out in a healing process. Or pardon me, the energy is moving in. In a healing process, the energy is moving out. You want to make sure as you do keep doing the right things. You know, one of the things that tells you that you're in a healing crisis is you're doing the right things. Am I, you know, doing the right things nutritionally, emotionally, relationship, uh, uh, exercise? Uh, if I am, then when confusion surfaces, it's a good thing because I'm now in the opportunity to move out the conflicting energies and I get the chance to straighten it out. So if you're straightening out your mind, cool. If you're using confusion to avoid, it's a whole different dynamic. So did you have another thought there, um, well, our caller just disappeared, so if you would call back in, you were next on the on the air, air number 646-200-4169, press 1, and it puts you in queue to talk to Michael. So if you'll call back in, and that's all the questions so we, in the chat room right now. we'd love to speak with you. Say it again, sweetie. I said until they call back in, that's all the questions out of the chat room, too. So oh, they're back. So, area code 541, okay. you're on the air. Hi, my name is Julie from Ashland, Oregon. Welcome, um, young lady. I, How are you today? I'm okay. Um, I don't really know what my question is. I was sort of having resistance to uh, actually talk to you. <laughs> but um, I am going through a lot of healing things and um, went through some with Ed this weekend and it's in a good place, so I'm real glad, you know, that I could recognize what it was. And and but I still feel like he's gone now. He had to move down to San Diego, and I'm feeling, you know, the absence of that which sustained me for a few days. Even though when he was coming here, I got an incredible headache. 
because there was just all this stuff going on in me, and um, I got it out with him. And anyway, I just, you know, I thwart myself, I guess. I, I interrupt myself from the commitment, from what I'm really committed to, this work, you know, and I um, I just sort of am in suspended animation right now. I, you know, I know what I should do and could do and would be best off doing, and uh, don't seem to love myself enough to give that to myself, I guess, maybe. Maybe that's what's going on right now. So I don't know what my question is, except, you know, I think I'm learning to love my true self and not my, my um, the self that has been the substitute for 59 years. <laughs> you know, and it's painful to see how little I've lived, you know. And I don't even know how to live now. I don't even know how to go forward to live because I have no experience. I'm just like, I don't know which is kind of good, but kind of lost feeling. So. Well, sometimes living the question can be an awesome place to be and uh, in, in, in a much better place than living in an answer that's in error and being sure that we're right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that can be a good place to find new dynamics in your world and in your life. And we're going to suggest that you don't love yourself. Uh, please don't love yourself. That's a big mistake. <laughs> Which, of course, most people are going to say, now, what are you talking about, Michael? I thought the whole game was about love. Yes, it's about experiencing yourself as the active presence of love. And the way that you do that is to let go of anything that's unlike the active presence love, of love in you. So so when people say, I'm, I'm loving myself or I love somebody, what they're really usually saying is, well, I'm just going into approval mode. I'm going to approve of them. And approval is not love. And love is not something that we do. It's the stuff we're made of. And when you start experiencing living as love rather than as an approval-seeking device, yeah, there's confusion, and sometimes I just don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And that's all mm-hmm. just a part of the process. Yeah, well, I'm definitely trusting the process. It's so good. Um I'm just I guess I get I'm I'm in the the edge of becoming that which I am. Not even becoming, but you know, re- restoring, I guess. Just being reclaim reclaiming, reclaiming the true self is an awesome thing to do. Yeah, reclaiming the truth. And yeah, oftentimes well, face I don't know what I'm gonna do when I grow up either. Yeah. I know what I've done and and the ego wants to solve the situation with all the things I already know how to do, but I'm 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 having to hold out for maybe a different picture and just feel the uneasiness, the discomfort of feeling insecure about it all, you know. So and trusting, you know, it's a whole new level of trusting. That a whole new level high. of trusting. Mm-hmm. A whole new trust yeah. level of trust, and I would offer that it gives the opportunity for a whole new level of breathing as well. You want to make sure mm-hmm. in that whole process that you're breathing and that you keep your breath moving. That's a really important step in the in the game. So you said trusting and loving and breathing. I, I didn't get the second one because um, you cut out a little, but I'm hearing you now. Trusting, trusting. loving, yes. Trusting, being love. Oh, being love. Do, doing loving things for yourself, but being love is different than loving yourself, which tends to be approval. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's allowing allowing yourself to breathe through everything that needs to be released. That's unlike who you are which is all of the old hostilities and fears that the world promotes to keep us under control. Okay. Breathing through helps to release that which looked like what, love? <laughs> I'm sorry, well, I'm really like sick any- right now. <laughs> that looks like anything that uh, doesn't belong in the system. Oh, you know, okay. in the presence of in the presence of the breath and in the increasing awareness of the presence of your being, love, 
mm-hmm. the mind will have to dissolve what isn't true. Oh, and here's a, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Here, well, here's an example, and I like I love when Nene shares. I'm really learning a lot from her, and I I see the same things. For example. Um, before Ed was arriving, um, and, and uh, I was going through a lot of unconscious behavior that I could see, but I did it anyway. For example, I bought some candy, that, and I justified that it was on sale, and I haven't had any in a long time, and all this blah, blah, blah. You know? And um, it, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even what I wanted to eat. It was just easy, fast, simple, and I was um, unconscious about other things going on. And so I ate it and and then uh it you know then it then it was possible for my mind to tell me that that was what was causing my headache, you know. And and then I also got to layer on the guilt for not doing the right things. You know, I I stepped away from my healing process and did something that was um the band-aid to help make the pain go away and so I was watching all this, and the headache got worse. It lasted all day. It lasted into the next day. And finally, when I talked to Ed about it, um, we it cleared because we brought love to it, and it wasn't just about dealing with the headache. It was all the thoughts and fears that were contributing to um, a, a, an experience of our relationship that I didn't like, and I had to get it out. And um, but it was real easy to see how easily we slip into giving the power to the bag of candy, you know, and that the solution is to fix that. And um, so I, I'm glad that, you know, the other thing that I was noticing parallel to those behaviors that were driven unconsciously by whatever I haven't quite fully uncovered yet, but I know it's lurking. Um, the other thing was that... Um, I could, oh, I lost it, Um, that I could see that, I can't can't remember because I barely saw it. Oh, well, it'll come. Something about Ed and me. I don't have it. It's not close right now, so I'll let it go. But anyway, just staying committed to knowing the right thing to choose even when I'm not choosing it. That's what I have to allow to get through these blocks sometimes. I, I could have gone and done a worksheet and done it all privately probably and you know and and there's something that just won't let me do that yet. I I, I give up. How many worksheets how many worksheets are you doing today? I'm not doing any unless I do once oh. in a while. So I apologize. I don't mean to insult you at all. No. Oh, no, no insult taken. I'm I'm cool with it. But I but notice better. that <laughs> notice that you're loving what you're learning from Nene, and what is teaching Nene, and you can have the same experience, is doing her work in her worksheets. Because yeah. here's what happens: we we we're conscious of perhaps. <laughs> Five percent of what's going on through conscious awareness, and as long as we're in that space of just being aware of the five percent, a million other things are going on under the surface, and we have no idea what's at the root of it. So we have these aches, we have these pains, we have blah 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 conflicts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to drill down into those hidden parts of my mind in order to clean them out, which means I think they're part of my identity and or I love them. I I like to have that conflict and that pain. I like to be able to say, oh, look at poor me. I have a headache today, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and I refuse to drill down. You could be having the same teaching that the nay is receiving and being able to pass on, but Notice that you don't want to, you don't value yourself enough to give that to yourself. I I have a, I, yes, and I have a thing uh, where forgiveness was practiced in my family. It was forgive and forget, so it actually kind of just went back into the unconscious. And um, well, let me let me inter- 
interrupt you. Let me interrupt you for a second, if I may. Excuse me, but okay. I'd offer forgiveness. It wasn't practiced in your family. What was practiced in your family was pardoning. So yes. don't hook the results of what they did by pardoning into your mind's idea of forgiveness and think, well, that's what forgiveness is, because that's not forgiveness. Where you okay. know with something totally different here. Yeah. Okay, and that's what I was going to say. Is I got addicted to. The way I felt once the slate was cleaned, you know, I was pardoned, you know, and then and then I would feel whatever a vitality or a, an ability to just live and be free again. But it was all predicated upon somebody pardoning me. And so if I don't get a pardoning, then um, I stay hooked into, you know, being imprisoned. I imprison myself in in the bad thing that I've done, whatever it is. So and then I'm also addicted. I have that pattern of uh, I I've got to get to this forgiveness place so that I can have my vitality back. Now you've given me the real tools, <laughs> but I'm addicted to the old way that worked for me, and so I'm just seeing that now. And that would have been that would have come through on a worksheet, I'm sure, if I would sit and do it. Thank you. Yeah, and and of course. When you when you really look at it, did it ever work for you? No, it came. Things came back, but then I needed my next hit of forgiveness. You know, I needed my next release. <laughs> Someone else has the key, right? Not me. Someone else has the key to un- unimprison me. So, wow, that's a big turnaround. I'm breathing now. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, major. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because, you know, I mean, I've been to all your workshops and everything, and I, I I have a mind that's intelligent and understands everything you say, and I teach it to others. But, you know, really doing it is way different. But that's the top 5%. Yeah. That's not what's going on in the 95% under the surface. <clears throat> and it's not until you drill down into that 95% and clean it out that the dynamics really change. Yeah. Okay. And, and sadly, there tends to be a lot of pain in that 95%, so who wants to go there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and who no. wants to eat that crappy candy, yeah. too? I mean, I don't want to eat that candy. <laughs> so, so I'll yeah. just pretend that my pain is just part of my victimhood and I have nothing to do about it and there's nothing I can do about it and I'll keep it hidden under the surface and never look there. Mm-hmm. There's oh. nothing about that that works. <laughs> there's nothing except about that play. that works, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing about that game that works except that I can play innocent victim. Yeah, I just perpetuate it and hope for the best. Of Sometimes I feel better. But it, See, that's the other thing. Oh, that's what I was noticing. That, that feeling better, that is not good enough. However, I get to feel out of that sort of a process. Um, when I was having my headache um, and Ed was coming down, I was noticing that I had recently been feeling a lot of vitality. So I noticed it must be a symptom of healing and that which does not belong was coming up. And I was trying to hold it back because it, it seemed like I was blaming Ed for everything, you know. But luckily, he was able to he was able to see through that as he allowed me to communicate, you know, and and so the headache went away because there was this stuff wanting to surface that needs to be removed. But I still need to do the work because I got my I got my fix from Ed, but I didn't do the work entirely myself. So that's there. I still got it. So, you have my private cell number. Yeah. <laughs> would, you be, would you be willing to text me at the end of each day when you finish your fifth worksheet for the day, for the next 40 days? <laughs> Why did you say 40 days? Five? Okay, you know what? I, I will make another effort. I will. I will make... A commitment. Oh, my God, a commitment. Yes, Michael, I will do that. And if I'm, if I'm having blocks and barriers, I'll, just, I'll text you that, too, okay? 
Well, if you're having blocks and barriers, that's what you do your worksheets on. You don't need to text me on the fact that you have blocks or barriers or you use that as an excuse to say, well, that's why I didn't do my five worksheets. So if you have a block or barrier, instead of texting me and not doing the worksheet, what I'm going to suggest is that you do a worksheet on having a block or a barrier. And you work through it. And that'll be awesome. (laughs) So I'll look forward to receiving your text every day for the next 40 days. Okay, (laughs) finish my worksheet. I'm on it. I got it. Oh, cool. God, I'm scared. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll Very just do cool. one step at a time, one worksheet at a time, and then it'll be five a day in 40 days. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm looking Love forward you. to it. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. And I, and I have another thought. You might, mm-hmm. with your support groups there, mm-hmm. you might invite your support groups to consider doing the same with you so that you're receiving their texts and you're supporting them. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. And Julie, Mm -hmm. you had said that you were learning a lot from Nene, and she says in the chat room, um, thank you, that it's her honor. And then when you were hesitating on the 40 days, she says, go for it, and she's got exclamation marks, and she says, yes, 40, and we support you in love. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jeannie. Thanks, Nene. Thank You're you. welcome. Oh. So, Nene, do you have anything to share with uh, with Julie? Why don't you call in if you've got something to share with her, because that just might help to inspire. And, of course, this is the dilemma of everybody. So it's, this isn't just about uh, about you, Julie. This is all of us. Yeah, yeah and I, I admire Jeannie? it from afar, but doing it here will be a great a great thing, a great step for me. Am I on? You are. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, well, I, I was just waiting to. I was waiting to see if Nene was going to call back in and keep you on there so that you can talk with her. That she hasn't oh. called in yet. Oh, so. I'm, okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for being patient. Whoever's listening here for my healing. Thank oh. you for being patient for my healing. This is perfect, too. Uh, Musicom writes in the uh, chat room and says, Ash Wednesday is February the 22nd, so that's the day after tomorrow, and that begins the 40 days of Lent. Oh, there you go. So perfect time to do 40 days. Now, that doesn't mean for you to wait for two days before you start, though, Julie. <laughs> I'll get a head start, yeah. And, then that and Musicom says that she will also begin 40 days of worksheets, five a day, on February 22nd, Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. So, oh, so who, who Musicom has agreed to do that, too. It's a person in the chat room. And Nene is now on the line with us. Hey, Nene. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Um, thank you so much. And, of course, uh, when I started, I remember when I, for the first day when I did the workshop, uh, doing the you know the worksheet that you, they are you receiving all that information and in spite of everything that was going on, I actually felt an internal shift and uh, light starting again to be alive in, in inside of me. So that I started doing my work, and right away, the first week I started doing the the five worksheets a day, I, I saw the shift, and I started um, bringing a different uh, relationship with myself and with my family right away. So it just, you know, you can do two in the morning or three in the evening or like that, but five a day. And you'll be connected to yourself, and it's so awesome because then you go into your crisis, but when you come out of the crisis, you are re-empowered. Mm, yeah. And it shows even in your physiology. Everybody asked me, somebody asked me the other day if I did something in Colombia, you know, for plastic surgery. So I said, no, oh no, eat raw food, do your spiritual work, you know, because I am rejuvenated. Whenever I go dancing, I feel it, my body feels well, and more than that, the healthy relationship with my daughter and seeing her that she is interested in. And 
everything around me and then being able to really choose instead of being in the darkness of the doing this because you know I'm afraid or this is the safe or I have no other option those things are you start cleaning those away from you and you have this extraordinary support and Michael and Jeannie and our whole team it's awesome it's it's amazing so I encourage you and I support you Oh, thank you, Danae. Thank you. Thank you. I I took every word. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And when I do a support group, I this is my experience. Uh, with how many people when you invoke Ruh de Kusha, hold hands. Oh. And you'll see you'll see the depth that it creates for everybody. Oh, that's the the what that it creates. Depth it creates the energy, the connection between each one of the participants and yourself with your inner higher super processor. Okay. I do that. I said, put your pens, you know, paper away, and let's hold hands, and we invoke Ruch de Kusha. Oh, that's And you a good bring idea. that energy. You bring that energy holding hands. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll try that. <laughs> This week, in fact, tonight. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I, I awesome. feel pretty thank much. You. I feel very directed now. Thank you. Cool. Well, you have our support. Okay. All right. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay. You. Blessings, and Nene. Thank you for calling in again. Yep. Thank you, Nene. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Have you the show? <laughs> And thank you, Jeannie, for connecting us. <laughs> you are welcome. And we do have another caller. So this oh. is area code 517. You're on the air. Hello there. Hey, Rick. How you doing? Is it great to talk with you, Jeannie? How are you doing, Michael? Good. Awesome. Good. Um, I love the idea of uh, starting a 40-day cycle um, at Lent. That's a great idea. It gives me a great excuse. So I was just chiming in to jump in and make sure that the – what was the woman's name again? We were talking it's with Sarah. Aiden and Aiden? Uh, yes, We were talking to Julie and uh, Nene, and Sarah's yes. the one that uh, told us that it was a uh, 40-day Lent coming up on Wednesday. Yes, and so Julie made a commitment to do that, and I, and I understand the, the difficulty sometimes with wavering. And <clears throat> so I just thought, well, I'll join with that and – support myself and our families and all of us and also make that commitment. So I just wanted to chime in and share that and uh, just let you know all I love you and great job. Thank you, Rex. You bet. Fantastic. And we do have another caller, and it's area code 336. 336, welcome to the show. Give us a name. Where are you calling from? Hello, three three six. You're on the show. Give us a call or give us a name. Where are you calling from? It's Tracy in Greensboro. Oh, hey there, young lady. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm hearing rumors that you guys are going to be in um, somewhere in Florida with my friends Jack and Jenna Boland. We are, as a matter of fact, they're going to be. Well, we've actually spent. Um, the last couple of weeks with them off and on when we spoke in Sarasota and then we did a couple of support groups in Sarasota. Yeah, well, I had emailed them and said that you were going to be there and said don't miss it, and so they finished up with you guys and loved it, and they emailed me and said we're going to do the intensive, and I was like, man, if I could work that out, I'd really like to work that out. So anyway, I had something upsetting happen today, and I noticed I wasn't breathing, and I, it was happening right when the, the the call was starting. So I was trying to breathe, and I thought, I'm just going to call and deal with this, and I'm inspired to commit to the 40 worksheets in 40 days because I haven't done that. I've been, like, I've got them all piled up, and then I keep, like, slipping out of existence. Like, it just keeps getting to the bottom of Tracy's to-do list. So 
I want to have the breakthrough. And so I got an email uh, like at five till one, and it was basically saying that all of this project that you've worked on is really great, and we're going to cut it all in half and make it different. And I know it's not your concept, and we're so sorry. We didn't include you in the decision, um, even though you're the designer, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I am just like I can feel my ego all wrapped up around my neck, you know, choking me to death because I'm angry and disappointed and hurt and blah, 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 fear and hostility. And it's like I'm trying to breathe and I'm not getting, I haven't done the worksheet yet. I'm in the car. I'm, you know, leaving one appointment to go to another and I get this disturbing email. And it's like where is the line between there are no accidents in God's universe that there's some reason this happened and this company is making this decision and I don't have to have any fear or hostility about their choices. Like I can't change what they do with my stuff, my project that they hired me for. You know, I can't go back to them. Well, I could go back to them and say, well, this isn't how it's supposed to be. You know, and so anyway, I just have like this gigantic internal conflict going on with, you know, how to be with that I, they don't even contact me in person. They send this flippant email and it's just, I feel fear, I feel hostility, anger, and, you know, I'm, I'm dry, I'm driving home to do a worksheet and I'm like, I'm just going to turn this show on and call them and maybe I'll just go to the April intensive instead of coming in August because I need help now. Well, it sounds like you've got your first 20 at least worksheets laid out for you. So you got your first uh, <laughs> five days Doesn't of it? work, four days of work there. That's, That's awesome. That's right. And notice that you are a space. And what happens, what tends to happen is the space that we are manifests. You know, we've talked before on the show about the, the video on our website about this pet lion that these guys in England had. And uh, this lion uh, gets to a size where they can't handle it anymore, so they ship it off to a preserve. And a year later, they want to go and visit this lion. There's a video of this on our website. Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. So so yeah. remember, they go looking for this lion, and the people in the preserve say, hey, this, this dude is totally and completely wild. He has his own pride. He's been on his own for a year. There's no way you can come and visit this lion. And they do. And the lion recognizes him. And they have a blast. The lion crawls all over them. And, you know, I mean, this huge male... And, and the, the most, to me, the most important and most interesting thing in the process is that the female is totally, completely wild, never exposed to humans. Female, his mate, comes down with him, and he is such a space that her total natural inclination is to be with these guys the same way he is. Rubs right. on them and allows them to pet her. Now, I don't think that's a result of a conversation. I don't think that's a result of an accident. I think that's a result of the space that this lion named Christian is. Is it possible? And, and of course, the question would be, as you look at how these people have done this, they sent you an email, they didn't communicate with you, they changed your thing, and, and now you've got a, your mind gives you a good reason for all this rage and pain. Is it possible that your rage and pain is the space that created them doing with your project what they did with your project? Could you entertain that for a moment? Yes. So if you go in and forgive, that is, let go of, and and you look at the worksheet and and it says, you know, I, I ask to have my capacity to produce this space, this energy, this anger, this fear, whatever it is, removed from me. Is it possible that if you were to change that space that you are, that that behavior might change on the ex- in the external? 
the same way that the mate of Christian the lion changed her behavior. Changed yeah, in a I way did. which would be considered to be totally impossible. Yes. So nope. let me see if I got it. Okay. Would the would the rage and pain and stuff be inside me because this happened, or are you saying it's in there before, and that's why it happened? Yes. So because I had, I already. Is that, a, is that a contributing factor to the way this creation came out? I'm processing so. I think my phone cut out for a minute. You're saying it is that a is my rage and pain that was already there like manifesting this result kind of exactly and, and yeah, the, way, okay. and the, way, the way you tap into that is how does this look like your life? How often have you faced this kind of a result? Yeah, why is this happening to me again? Mm-hmm, kind of like mm-hmm. that yeah. Yeah, okay. So so there's the there are the worksheets because that the I mean, I'm just dumbfounded by like it's really hard for me to get my head around that 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 like I feel like I've just been really really great and accepting and loving toward, you know, allowing this to be how it is. And so through many just articulations and gyrations of getting this to happen and then to have this happen is like really you got to be kidding me I can't believe you know it's like I'm appalled and shocked and disappointed so it's a hard pill to swallow to think that I created it like I don't want to be there I don't want you know I want it to be a different way and it's not what you're telling me is I did it again you know, I created this stink, if you will, again. So there are my 40 worksheets. That'll be a good start on them. And and to, you know, let, let me share a story. There was a, a couple that I worked with several years ago in South Florida. And the, the man in this couple was a military trainer for the Army. And... They uh, they had family up in the Northeast, and they were really clear that there was one place they did not want to go, and that was Pensacola, Florida. I mean, they talked about it in class one night. Of you know, we're getting re- we know we're going to get reassigned, and there's an assignment up in the the hometown that we're both from, so that we can be there with family, and that's what we're holding the space for. And we sure hope they don't assign us to Pensacola, Florida. Well, their orders came through. Guess where they were going? Pensacola. Pensacola, Florida. I mean, they were so peeved, and they started doing worksheets. Now, the Army, from my understanding, and we've only got a few seconds left, but the Army, from what I understand, doesn't change orders once they come through. I mean, that's it. You're, it's, it's a done deal. They started doing worksheets, And about three weeks later, just out of the blue, no requests made, no nothing, they get a new set of orders. Guess where they're going? Exactly the town they wanted to go to. We have a whole lot more power in this space that we hold and that we are. And as you learn to forgive the hostility and fear and remove it from yourself, the space you are produces different results. And in fact, it will produce guaranteed the best year yet of your eternal life. And that's what we hold for you. And if you'd like, let's continue this call tomorrow. Our time is up. We love you. We bless you. And we'll look forward to chatting with you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.yagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com.